Hi, I'm Keith Shannon with Direct Carpet. Today we're going to show you how to put in a professional stair runner. We're going to show you all the tips and tricks and how I do it. So here we go. Without further ado, we are laying out the carpet up the stairs. This is a herringbone runner from Anderson Tough Techs. Today we're going to be using an electric stable gun, a pad stapler for the under pad, a kicker, a tucker, a hammer, a good knife, a good pair of scissors, a pencil. We'll show you how it's done. Now we're lining up along the cord around at the bottom for a nice finish. The bottom of our carpets are finished with a nice sewn edge. So we're lining this up on the cord around and we're putting a staple every two inches or depends on if the carpet, if it needs more, put more. If you need less, put less. So here we go, follow along. We're gonna run our hand along there to make sure that we have uh, no staples popping out because if we do, we're gonna pull them out. Lining your stair runner up is the most important thing. If you start straight, you'll end straight. As long as you course correct as you go, we're gonna show you how to do that. So right here, so here you can see we're pulling it back and we're gonna pre-form the nose. We're just pushing it down. You know, a little bit of elbow grease. And get that stair runner down into uh, position so that we can get under the nose with our staple gun on the 45 degree angle. Now we're going to put a staple every inch or two, depending on the carpet, with Anderson Tough Text to get that nice groove. I like it every inch, sometimes two on the ends. You'll see I'll probably pop two in the ends here. Let's see, get to the end, one, two, yep. Then we're going to feel along that uh, underneath to see if anything uh, popped out. If it did pop out, we're going to pull that staple and then we're going to stick another couple in there. So now that we have it in position, we're going to take our tape measure. We're gonna, sorry, we're gonna get our kicker in position. We're gonna take our kicker. We're going to put some pressure on it and we're gonna measure on the inside wall to make sure our measurement is exact at the front and exact at the back. I believe we're five and a quarter on the front and five and a quarter on the back. That means we should be that all the way up. If you did your math correctly and you centered your carpet runner before you started, centered your under pad, you'll be in good position. So here you can see we're stapling down the side, possibly three, four staples, depends on how many you want. Now, if you do not want the indentations, you don't have to staple it. I like to staple it. It takes a long time for it to form and a lot of dirt and things get under there if you don't staple that down. We take our tucker, we're gonna groove that four or five times. Remember I said it's very tough stuff. We're gonna groove that, we're gonna put pressure on with the kicker, and we're gonna staple every inch or two all the way along, depending off the carpet needs it or not. Then we're gonna take our tucker and our hammer, and we're gonna hammer all the way along in the groove, and what that does is makes a real nice groove. A nice clean line makes it look really professional. So here we go, we're getting ready to set up for our second stair. We pull a little bit back, Let's check our measurement here. We're supposed to be at five and a quarter, and I want to see if we're still on track because no stair is ever straight. And you're only as straight as, you know, as you uh, use your tape measure. So here we're preforming again. Nothing will change all the way up. It's going to be the same method. So if you're installing this DIY yourself, this is the method that you want to use. So here we go. We preformed. Now we're stapling under the nose, one inch to two inch. And all the way down, two on the ends sometimes, because what happens is the ends can pop out, and you just don't want that. So always, uh, I use a lot of staples, so we're gonna put another track of staples in there. And this is in real time. I'm not gonna cut anything out. We're just gonna run with it. If there's any downtime, I'll cut it out, but let's just do this in real time so you can watch along and really get a feel for what I'm doing. So see, we measured again, five and a quarter at the back, Right? I already know it's five and a quarter at the front. Now we're gonna pop those stables in. We've got pressure on the kicker. We're leaning into the kicker. We're putting a lot of pressure in there. You want it tight. You don't want these stairs loose. So now we moved our kicker over. We're doing pressure on the other side and we're putting our staples all along. Three to four staples. I like three if I have to. With Anderson Tough Text, I will use four. Here we are again, same method. We're scoring with the edge of our tucker, but you don't wanna rip it. 
This stuff's super strong, super tough, but it will tear if you if you tear into it. So that's why you work it and work it and work it until she starts to groove. Now we've got our staples in, we're gonna groove even more with our hammer and our tucker all the way along. And now we're gonna repeat, rinse and repeat. If you're enjoying what you see, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. If you're looking for a carpet runner or a stair runner, like this, you can go to directcarpet.com. We've got a ton of stuff there. And if you need to uh, ask any questions, hit the chat button. You'll be talking with me directly and I can answer anything that you, uh, any questions that you have. So here we go. Here's a nice side view, preforming. Now get under there on the 45, lots of staples, one every inch, two on the end, right? Cause as you, as the stairs go up and it's in your eye, you'll see underneath there if you don't have a nice, a nice groove, a nice uh, 45. So we're back on top. We're measuring on the far side, five and a quarter. Looks like I've got it. We're gonna put pressure, check it again. We've got pressure, here we go. I guess I course corrected there. You can see, double checked three times I checked. Now, lock it into position. One, two, three, done. Now we'll go to the left, put some pressure on. One, two, three, four staples on the left. Anderson Tough Tex. Okay, so here we are. We're gonna groove it again. Don't try to groove it at one, at one full, at one time. Work it. I was working this. You can see this in real time. Four times, five times, six times. Get pressure on it. 45 all the way down. If I feel like it needs to be tightened up in the middle, when I go to do those, I will put the kicker in and I will punch in a bunch of staples into that 45 if I feel a little uh, that it's not tight. You want your stair runner to be tight. It's supposed to be safe and secure for people to walk down. Here we go. Pull it back. We're going to preform that. Okay, so same thing, 45, up on the uh, up on the 45, lots of staples. Make sure you got lots of staples when you do this. So here we go. We're on our last one, so we're gonna show you how to cut this one. Now, like I said, our carpet runners, most of them come full length. If you need 12 feet, we send you 12 feet. If you need 30 feet, we send you 30 feet. And there is videos on there on how to measure how much carpet you're gonna need. Uh, if you don't know, hit the chat button, uh, send me a picture of your stairs and I'll figure it out for you. So here we go, we've got, uh, we know we're five and a quarter on the left, or sorry, on the right. Um, and the reason why we're not measuring on the left is because this staircase, uh, one side goes straight and the other side kind of curves in. So the lady uh, had asked us to stay straight on the one side and not worry about the other side. So here we go, we're putting our, our uh, stable gun in on the 45 all the way along, making sure that we're grooved. We're gonna get uh, a hammer in there, a tucker in there, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna get a sharp blade and we're gonna cut this end off because now we have to put in another piece. There was someone who asked me the other day in one of the comments, how do you join a carpet runner? Well, you're gonna get a chance to see that in a few minutes. So you can see I'm changing my blade. Always use a sharp blade. And whenever you're gonna cut a uh, carpet with binding, cut from the outside in on one side and cut from the outside in on the other side. See, from the outside, halfway. And then now the opposite side, here we go. Cut all the way into the middle, nice clean on the 45. We're gonna show you how that looks. Should be pretty tight in there, man. There we go. Clean that out. And now we're gonna uh, grab our next piece and we're gonna show you how we join a carpet runner so you can't even tell there was a joint. All right. So here we go. We get our, another piece of carpet. Now remember, carpet comes in a certain direction. We've got 
the chevrons facing down, and the pile facing down. Okay, you can see that I'm pointing out that this line is nice and straight. And also, I had cut the carpet so the powder would line up exactly. So we're just gonna get this into position. You can see the lines looking good. We're gonna get that lined up perfectly. Take your time. We're gonna lock that into position. Looks pretty good from here. Let's get one in there, two in there. And now let's check the other side. I got that little tab. Sometimes I like to leave the tab on so that it's a nice clean fit. I stick it in behind there, line that up. Look, you never even tell. Lock it in. Complete. And that's how you join a stair runner together in pieces properly. Okay, so here we're gonna go. We're gonna just show you two more stairs before we get to the landing. I'm sure you've seen most of these stairs on how I do it. So let's just get up into the groove. Now we've got a double check. Now remember, we've, we're have we hoping that we checked that carpet that was straight, but we wanna make sure that she didn't turn as we go. So we're gonna roll that up over the stair and then we're gonna check with the tape measure to make sure that we are exact. Five and a quarter was our measurement. So we wanna be five and a quarter. If we were off, we would course correct by just putting a little bit of pressure to the left. Say it was a little bit, say it was five inches as I came over. We'd course correct by pushing it this way a little bit and then working it up the next two stairs to get it back on course. You have to move it slowly. You don't wanna move it all, all at once because you'll, you'll bubble it. Here we are locking into the sides, locking into the sides. Then we're gonna score with our tucker. There's one, two, three, four, five, six times I did that. Put pressure, staple on the 45 all the way down, every inch or two. Tucker, hammer. Let's make that line look really professional. A nice line right there with that hammer and tucker. All right, lots of staples. If anyone's wondering, we're using 5 16 staples crown, 9 16 crown. Same thing, here we go. We're just doing the last stair here, up under the 45. You guys get a good view of that. Now, that's your top that comes with the finished piece. I'm cutting the extra off. Be careful, this is the only one you got. But listen, we're gonna get this into position. Nothing changes, staple the sides. Then we're gonna score the last piece there. See how many times? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Good Lord. All right, now we're gonna staple all in the 45, all the way along. Then we're gonna get ourselves a sharp blade. Oh, pardon me. We're gonna hammer that in. I should pay attention to my own rules. Now, we've got a sharp blade cut to the middle, sharp blade cut to the middle from the outside in. On the 45, you don't wanna be short. Take your time on this, check. Make sure you're not cutting short as you go. Look at that, perfect. All right, now we're ready for the top riser. What you've been waiting for this whole time. This is the secret sauce right here. Okay, we're gonna take our tape measure and we're gonna measure down. I think it was six and three eighths. I can't really see there, can you see? Yeah, it's probably about six and three eighths. You wanna check both sides because not all stairs are straight. So now we're gonna flip over our prefab ending. You can see that I have, that the end is sewn there. We're gonna measure six and three quarters down with a little kick. We're gonna do the same on the other side. Six and three quarters with a little kick.
Now we're gonna take something straight and we're gonna line up those two lines. See that little kick down? Very important. Secret sauce stuff. Okay, line that up. Take the pencil, run it down. Get a good line. Get your good pair of scissors. Yes, you can use an X-Acto knife if you want. I would cut the outsides with some pair of scissors. Okay, we've made our little groove cut in there and we're gonna follow the line all the way along. Take your time. This is important, this piece. This is your finish when you walk up to the end of your stairs. You want it to look fantastic. And like I said, you only get one. If you need to order another one, sure you can. But listen, if you do, take your time and do it right. You won't have to. Let's clean this up. Let's check this out. Now, I always cut it a little bit big. I don't want to be short. I want, I'd rather work. I'd rather fine tune it down than be short. Because I only have one here too. Okay, so we're gonna angle cut up. There we go. And we're gonna take off, you know, 16th, eighth of an inch, whatever we think. Not too much. We'll do it three, four times if we have to. Take your time. All right, we won't cut straight. We're gonna cut and groove down because see that little that little edge there, we want it to kind of meet our binding on each end, right? We want it to wrap around the carpet. Let's try it again. Let's fit it in here. See where we're at. Still a little tight. It's good over there on the left, a little tight on the right. Okay. Let's trim it just a little bit more. Not all the way, but just to get those bubbles out. Keep our angle cut. Let's take another eighth inch off for 16th, whatever you think. Because this is the oopsie mo this is the oopsie time. Oopsie. Okay, so let's fit this in for the last time. Get it into position. I like a snug fit. I'll tap it down with the, with the tucker a little bit, groove it in, push it in, get it in line on the left and on the right before I lock it in with a staple. And then, uh, cause you want it to look like it was always one piece. That is the secret. Okay, obviously I'm happy with that. Lock it into position. You don't need a ton of staples on this. Every three inches. Try to hide them in the lines. I'm gonna fold our little tab in there. If you have a tab, if it's not glued, just fold it in. Usually I glue them for you. Look at every five inches along the top. It's not going anywhere. One in the middle, a little bubbly. Let's push that down with a staple. Nice. All right. Well, thanks for watching. I'm Keith Shannon with directcarpet.com. If you're looking for a stair runner, carpet runner, area rug, check out www.directcarpet.com. Uh, if you see something you like there and you want to ask a question, hit the chat button. You'll be talking directly with me. If you liked what you saw here, uh, hit the like button. If you uh, are not subscribed yet, please subscribe. I would love to hear uh, some comments from you. Leave, leave me a comment down below. I read all my comments. I answer all my comments. And uh, let me know what you thought of this herringbone runner. I'm Keyshan with directcarpet.com. Thanks for watching.